Hi, this is Anne with my second installment for the My Data exercise this week. Uh, what you see in front of you are, is the code as I left it last, where I have um, an array with a set of items in it. In this case, the um, wives of Henry VIII. And um, in the bad old days before we had objects, if you wanted to match up, say, a person and some attribute about her, what you would often do is create a set of parallel arrays. And you'll see that in the bubble report exercise this week, um, where you have two arrays with two sets of va different values for the same um, bubble uh, solutions. Here, I've got a set of women. These women had um, full, if sometimes tragic lives. I'm sure that they were very three-dimensional. Um, and we need to have a second set of attributes about them. Um, so we're going to call that my data two. It's going to be an array. It's going to have the same number of entries in it that the first one did. And despite the fact that there are probably many different things to remember about these women, what everybody always wants to know is what their fate was. And, um, and since we all know the little ditty, divorce, beheaded, died, divorce, beheaded, survived, I've gone ahead and made it so you don't have to watch me type that in. And um, I'm going to control shift B so all of my formatting lines up. Um, that didn't seem to be a control shift B. There we go. Um, so Catherine of Aragon was divorced, Anne of Boleyn was beheaded. Um, at some point, perhaps you'll run into a history or a religion um, expert who will argue with this, um, although we all remember Henry VIII as having basically um, invented divorce in England. Um, technically, I believe that the people who are listed here as divorced were, in the words of those days, their marriages were annulled. Um, but they managed to um, live past marrying Henry while he was still alive. So we're gonna call him divorce because it sounds better that way. So, um, so anyway, here I have a set of people. Um, here I have their fates. And if I want to keep track of, um, if I want to be able to print out or to select the women based on their fate attribute, um, in, again, in the old bad days before objects, what I would do is I'd have two arrays like this and um, Oh yes, I haven't saved this as, as um, my data too. So let me do that. Uh, so easy to forget. Okay, so now I have a my data two, um, a my data one, and I'm working in my data two. Um, and I think my data one is still the same as it was. Okay, so this is, to array output, what? And what happens here is um, kind of by definition, the length of my data one and my data two are the same. So we continue to, to iterate across the length of my data one. And um, all we can do here is, um, or what we can do here that, that works out is we can just add to this concatenation. Um, so let's add a label. Um, fate, what was their fate in life? Um, and in this case, um, the fate of index zero matches the person of index zero. So what we do here is we simply print out my data two index equals I. And if I run that, And again, I'm going to pull this output window up here so I can see both of these. Um, and I can see that for um, index zero, Catherine of Aragon, she was divorced. Um, good old Anne of Cleves was also divorced. She was much happier about it, so it wasn't the trauma for her that it was for um, Catherine of Aragon. And um, that's, that works out pretty well. Um, one thing, though, that I would suggest is um, at this point, 
the output's getting long enough and complicated enough that it can be useful to, um, to separate these things out. And I think what I'm going to do is create a variable up here called output and just refactor this code to um, compose output. So um, what I'm going to do is set output equal to, um, and the first thing I'm going to do is grab this whole string inside here. And um, log the variable, that's going to be easier to read. And again, I'm not changing how this works. I'm just changing how the code reads and um, trying to make it a little bit easier to um, understand and change this as we go along. So what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to concatenate to output in three segments. So I'm going to copy that line and duplicate it and end um, the first part right here. So first <clears throat> we set output equal to just the index value, okay, um, labeled index value. And then we concatenate output to the name value and get rid of everything up through here. And then finally, we take output and we add a fate on the end. And I think it's a little easier this way to see that the, um, that the output is right, that you got the spacing right and all of that. It is quite possible instead of doing this output equals output plus to um, be a little bit less verbose and to type that as simply output plus equals the label and the value. Um, but frankly, I think simplicity is better than short now. So I, um, I know the book has these sections on um, trying to get you to um, reduce your verbosity and that is not really my concern. As long as the lines are easy to read, I don't think you need to worry about them. And I think breaking this um, concatenation up into three parts, getting my semicolon in the right place. And I'm going to run this code again, and then the output should be exactly the same. Okay, and it is. So you may or may not think that this is an improvement over um, the previous version. I kind of like it. Um, I like nice short lines. Now, one of the things we wanted to do in this, in this um, exercise was be able to select the data on, in my data based on the attributes in my data too. So what I'm going to do is um, come down here and um, let's see, I think we'll put a console log, an empty one, so it just makes a blank space um, before the next segment of the output. I'm going to go ahead and just copy the first part and call this a, um, this one will just be the beheadeds, because if we're going to be dealing with these um, people, we might as well be as bloodthirsty as we can. So here we're going to make a list of the beheaded wives, and what I want to do is I really only want to generate output if the entry in my data 2 is equal to by beheaded. So to do that, I just add an if statement, uh, my data to sub i, right? Because I want to look at each index as we go along. If that value is equal to, um, and I can have either single quotes or double quotes here. If that's equal to by beheaded, then do the output. Um, once again, I'm going to apply formatting. I usually do control shift B, but you can use the menu if you want. Get everything to look neat. So here I've got an empty line. I've got a label for the beheaded wives. I don't need to redeclare output, so let's get rid of that line. And you'll note that's what this is saying is it's already defined, so don't define it again. So let's pull that. Okay. Um, here, we're adding to output, 
here we're resetting the value, so we're starting output over again. And um, I don't even really need the second part, but just for debugging, the first time I run this, I'm going to go ahead and leave the fate in place and um, run this file. Come over here. Here's my full array. And this is not working. So I need to figure out why. Oh, I know why. Um, because this console log needs to be inside the if statement. So I was just logging stuff that was left over. So um, here, I not only generate the output line, but I also only log the output if the entry in the second array is beheaded. So let's see if that works a little bit better. Okay, and I should see the full five index array here, and then I am selecting specific wives based on their fate. Um, and in fact, you know, if you're just caring about your output, one thing you could do here is get rid of this line since these are in fact already fate beheaded wives. And we have all of the, all of the data and here we have done selection based on the criteria, criteria of their fate. Um, so um, you'll do this in the bubble report is have two arrays with, in those cases, numbers in them, which I think are a little bit harder to understand. And you'll be selecting items from the first array um, based partly on what's in the second array. So that's it for the second recording on this lesson. Uh, thanks for listening.